Now you may or may not know what exactly an asteroid is. Contrary to popular belief, an asteroid isn't necessarily just a giant space rock. Although an asteroid can technically be a giant space rock, they vary in size and can technically be anything rocky that comes from space. So I guess a giant space rock. The exact definition of an asteroid is as follows. A small rocky body orbiting the sun. Large number of these ranging in size from nearly 600 miles, 1000 kilometers across, series to dust particles are found as the asteroid belt, especially between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, though some have more eccentric orbits and a few pass close to Earth or enter the atmosphere as meteors. So yes, they can be massive space rocks, but technically they could be as small as dust particles. We just wouldn't really see or know that they're there. But given what we do know about asteroids and how they could be incredibly dangerous, should one hit a populated area, we got to thinking, if one headed to Earth, what would we do? Today on LBQ, we're asking, can we stop an asteroid? Make sure you guys smash that like button, or you'll be the reason why an asteroid destroys the Earth this week. So up to you if you guys want that on your conscience. Now, given that asteroids come in all shapes and sizes, the answer to this question drastically changes depending on the size of said asteroid we're trying to stop. If it's a space rock the size of a small planet, then yeah, we likely can and will do everything humanly possible to stop that bad boy, assuming it's heading straight for us. If it's a small dust particle or a space particle that over the years was once a large rock, but has disintegrated into dust, well, believe it or not, that would be much tougher to stop, but much less detrimental to us, so not much of a concern. For the sake of having some fun with this video, let's go with the imagery of a large space rock. Odds are when you think of an asteroid, you think of a big rocky red or gray, maybe orange or black rock. However, as you can imagine, size is just the tip of the iceberg, or should I say, asteroid. Hey, you guys see what I did there? I replaced the same tip of the iceberg with the asteroid because we're talking about asteroids, you know? I'm sure you guys got the joke, don't have to explain it, but just in case anybody needed me to, there it is for you. So it seems asteroids are classified according to two things, their orbit and their composition, or what they're made up of. First, let's start with the orbits. The majority of asteroids fall within the main asteroid belt, which is located between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. It's believed this area holds over 200 asteroids larger than 60 miles, 100 kilometers in diameter. However, some estimate that the asteroid belt is also home to a couple million asteroids, about 3,300 feet in diameter, and millions of even smaller ones. The asteroid belt is home to more than just asteroids. Asteroids, as Ceres, which was once considered an asteroid, is now officially recognized as a dwarf planet. And this is just one of the three well-known areas where asteroids and apparently dwarf planets orbit. Another type of orbit, known to be home to many asteroids, potentially as many as the asteroid belt, is referred to as the Trojan asteroids. These asteroids orbit planets where the gravitational pull of the sun and said planets are balanced. Jupiter has the most of these types of orbiting asteroids. However, Mars, Neptune, and Earth also have Trojan asteroids of their own. And for our third classification, last and certainly not least, we got our NEAs, which stands for Near Earth Asteroids. These are the fun ones the Daily Mail writes about on an hourly basis. I'm sure you guys have seen the article headlined, Massive Asteroid Coming to Earth, Society Doomed, or NASA Warns the World of Potential Asteroid, Biggest Ever Recorded, Making Its Way to Earth. Yeah, I'm sure there's an asteroid coming to Earth, which is why the Daily Mail was the only publication writing about it. <laughs> the White House hasn't spoken on it. <laughs> Russia, China, these countries, no one's spoken on it. <laughs> just, just the Daily Mail knows about it. So they must have some inside information at NASA, or maybe with the aliens. Who knows? What I do know is that these near-Earth asteroids, or NEAs, circle closer to Earth than they do the Sun. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're coming for our planet, but in a geographical location, they're closer to us, so they're given that name. And it seems near-Earth asteroids can be broken down into three more specific categories. Isn't space and science fun? I'm having fun. I think I should say, like, SPACE AND SCIENCE! See, now we're adding space into the science screaming, so it's just gonna be more words that I could yell at you guys. As explained on SPACE.com, space.com in case you guys couldn't understand what I was saying there. I quote, and more asteroids have close orbits that approach but do not cross Earth's path, according to NASA. Apollo asteroids have Earth crossing orbits but spend most of their time outside the planet's path. A 10 asteroids also cross Earth's orbit but spend most of their time inside Earth's orbit. A tier asteroids are near Earth asteroids whose orbits are contained within Earth's orbit. According to the European Space Agency, roughly 10,000 of the known asteroids are NEAs. Now ain't that something? We got all these asteroids way closer to us than we realize, and no one is talking about it. Well, except maybe the Daily Mail. Maybe they're onto something, guys. I don't know. Now, in regards to these three types of orbits, which, as you can see, also have subclasses, asteroids are also classified according to what materials they're made up of. For the most part, they're broken into three types of asteroids, but there are a handful of other more rare types of asteroids as well. For context sake, we'll just focus on the three main or most common types. First, we got the C-type, also known as the carbonaceous asteroid. They're typically gray in color and the most common, believe 
believed to make up more than 75% of known asteroids. In regards to composition, it's believed they are made up of clay and stony silicate rocks. Moving on, we got the S type, or a silicaceous asteroid, which is commonly green to reddish, composed of silicate or nickel iron, and make up about 17% of known asteroids, give or take. And last but not least, the M type, or metallic asteroids. These are believed to be made up of nickel iron, usually reddish in color, and make up the majority of other asteroids that aren't S or C type. So now that we've had our little asteroid lesson, hopefully answering this question is a little easier to break down or at least understand. As you can imagine, depending on which asteroid we're dealing with, as in type and location, also significantly changes the answer to our question. Given that the odds of a Trojan Jupiter asteroid coming to Earth is pretty much impossible, we don't have to worry about those as much. But as we know, those NEAs or near Earth asteroids could potentially cause some significant damage and potentially even kill. So, can we stop an asteroid? Well, would we really have a choice in the matter? If it's the asteroid or us, you bet we'd at the very least try to stop this thing. And the good news is, the earlier on we catch it, the easier things become for stopping them. And by stopping them, I mean redirecting them. The bad news is, sometimes we discover asteroids headed for Earth far too late, leading to the inevitable happening. They crash into Earth, which has happened many times. Many, many times, actually. And it's gonna continue happening. So to answer the question, can we stop an asteroid? No, if anything, we could just redirect it or change its orbit so it doesn't come crashing down. Stopping it altogether, well, that would be almost impossible. Now, for context's sake, I'm not ending the video there. To me, this question is really, can we stop an asteroid from hitting the Earth? And the answer to that, as I previously mentioned, depends on when we discover said asteroid coming for Earth. Now, for the sake of terminology, I'll quickly explain the difference between an asteroid, meteoroid, meteor, and meteorite. So an asteroid is a space rock, usually in the asteroid belt, orbiting in between Jupiter and Mars. A meteoroid is also a space rock that is larger than a speck of dust, but smaller than an asteroid. Not sure exact measurements, but just know a meteoroid is a pebble compared to an asteroid. When a meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere and starts to burn up, due to its high speeds, it's entering our atmosphere, it becomes what's referred to as a meteor. Also commonly referred to as a shooting or falling star, a meteor is a space rock in our atmosphere on fire making its way to us. However, the rock itself, or debris, would still technically be a meteoroid, as the term meteor refers to the flash of light or fire-esque characteristics space rocks have when falling through Earth's atmosphere. Usually by the time meteors actually reach the ground, they're turned into dust particles, which occurs as they disintegrate on their journey down to Earth. However, when they stay intact and pieces of space rock land on Earth, those are called meteorites. So now that we know the difference between all these terms, the question is a little easier to answer. As I mentioned before, depending on when we can locate the asteroid in space determines the likelihood that we can redirect it before it turns into a problem for us here on Earth. And to no surprise, this is something that has been discussed, which is why there are groups of scientists who track what are labeled as potentially hazardous asteroids. These scientists believe that if we were able to find an asteroid heading for Earth in about 30 or 40 years, we'd be able to stop it before it's too late. Although we'd have to find ways of creating new technologies to either explode the asteroid into smaller pieces altogether or change its direction, it's certainly possible. However, tracking asteroids isn't as easy as just looking through a telescope. For every known asteroid, it's believed there are dozens of unknowns, which can include near-Earth asteroids as well. This is where things get a little scary. Thankfully, most technologies used for tracking asteroids are pretty solid, so when we do find there's a potential threat of an asteroid coming to Earth, we'll likely be capable of stopping it in its tracks. And by stopping it, I actually mean blowing it up into smaller pieces or just redirecting its orbit. Thanks to NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, PDCO, who pretty much work on this stuff all day long, it seems like we'll be okay. Their radars are able to determine an asteroid's size, shape, and other determining factors, which led Marina Brozovich, a NASA physicist, to refer to the radar as a Swiss army knife, explaining, I quote, radar is a little bit like a Swiss army knife. It reveals so much about asteroids all at once. And should we ever need to destroy or redirect an asteroid, it seems the PDCO at NASA has at least two options, as per defense officer Lindley Johnson. Option one is to use a kinetic impactor, which would be a spacecraft sent to collide with the asteroid to move its orbit. The second option is a gravity tractor, which would also change its orbit by having a spacecraft remain near the asteroid, changing its gravitational pull, thus redirecting it. It seems blowing up up asteroids is very rarely a good idea, especially when they're near Earth, as there's no way of determining which way the smaller space rocks will go after the initial explosion. As in, we blow it up and then we have a bunch of smaller meteorites coming for Earth, you know? So all in all, can we outright stop an asteroid? No, because they'll continuously orbit regardless of what we do. But if we really need to stop an asteroid from coming to destroy the Earth, so long as we have about 30 to 40 years, maybe 50 if it's a really, really big one, 
then yes, I think we're still capable. Still, doesn't mean we're safe forever, as back in 2013, a meteor exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia, injuring over a thousand and severely damaging the town. In December 2018, a meteor also exploded over the Bering Sea, and no one really knew until afterwards. This was likely due to the fact that the area it exploded over covers a stretch of cold, uninhabited land located in the Pacific Ocean between Russia and Alaska. Thus, the area likely doesn't get tracked as often for meteors compared to. I don't know, like Moscow? And there you have it, folks. As always, let us know your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's do some common replies from the video. How much of space have we explored? Aton 2 k 2 said, let's put it this way. We've only discovered like 5% of the oceans. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of the ocean that we need to discover, but the thing with space is like we really don't know how big it is. Even one percent could really be like zero point zero 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 one percent. Like it, it, there is no end to it. So how do you measure that? You know? Chad said zero percent. I, but it, no. That's not true. It's not zero percent because we have explored a lot of it, even through telescopes, even through technologies like the Milky Way, the galaxies, universe, like we, we know it exists, so technically it's been discovered. We haven't necessarily gone through it, but we've discovered it, so it's not zero percent. Fox Jake said, what if we explored space too deep and get sucked into a black hole that would likely send us to another universe or through time? I'm not glad, that'd be pretty cool. I know it sounds scary, because it is, but it's also kind of cool, but I heard black holes would just turn you into like spaghetti. Like, time and space changes and your body literally elongates <laughs> like I can't even you write your brain can't even comprehend what would happen to you but you would you would probably die very quickly so anyways guys we don't want that so we're gonna end it on a positive note I'm gonna give you guys some kisses and say stay spicy ah, I love you guys stay spicy